Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this time and space that God has created especially for us. Time to come together to know our God, to know the love that we all seek and the forgiveness we all need. Wherever you have been on your journey, wherever you are headed, God is calling to you today that you would know you are welcome in your heart. So welcome. Please join me in our opening hymn. Holy God, whose gracious power. Good morning, brothers and sisters. As we come into this time and this space, let us join in our opening call to worship. The prophets of old spoke of God's justice even when it was unwelcome. Who will hear their message? We will listen and we will hear. Responding to God's call, Jesus traveled, preaching and teaching all who would listen. Who will hear his message? We will listen and we will hear. Christ sent out disciples two by two to spread the good news in any place that would welcome them. Who will hear their message? We will listen and we will hear. God's prophets are among us still, around the world and in these pews. Who will hear their message? We will listen, and we will Let us join in our confession and assurance. To you I lift my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of a servant look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O God. Have mercy upon us. 
Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than its fill. Scorn of those who are enemies, of contempt of the proud. Have mercy upon us, O God. Have mercy upon us. People of faith, know that your God has had mercy upon you. Go out into the world proclaiming this good news and acting out justice and mercy in all you do. We are God's created and will answer the call of our Creator. Let us join in the hymn, It is well with my soul.
first reading this morning comes from the book of 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, verses 2 through 10. Paul writes, I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up in paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool. For I will not be speaking, I will be speaking the truth. Better I refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelation. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then, reading of God's word. May it have its blessing. It's always hard for us to show our weaknesses. Hard for us to let people know where we might be struggling. To let people know what it might be that's causing us trials. Because we don't want anybody to know we might be weak. And if we're weak, we don't want anybody to know where those weaknesses are, because they might exploit them. Because that's what people in this world do. They exploit our weaknesses. They make themselves bigger by making us small. Paul turns that on its head today. Talks about us being called, even with our weaknesses, and how the only way we truly gain power is to admit those weaknesses so that we can rely on God. It's there that we are made strong. We are at our strongest when we're no longer relying on our own intuition, our own powers, our own abilities, but we're relying on God and what God is doing in and through us. Let that sink in for a second. We are only truly strong when we stop focusing on us and start relying on God. As Paul puts it, as he's asking God to remove these weaknesses, these problems that he's having, these temptations, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. The power is made perfect in weakness. See, God is able to do the perfect through the weakest because it's there that nobody can claim any other responsibility for. I can't say that I'm the one who did something, and neither can you, when it was well beyond our abilities, and yet it happened. Even Jesus realized that it wasn't about him. And this is something we have to truly understand in order to truly acknowledge what Christianity is. See, there's a difference between Jesus and Christ. Christ is the second person of the Holy Trinity. 
the heavenly part of the Godhead. Jesus is the human incarnation of God on earth. So when we talk about Jesus, we are talking about a 33-year period in history. When we talk about Christ, we are talking about the eternal, about the one who made the sacrifice of all the heavenly in order to become us, in order to become human, to live like us, to experience like us, to know the weaknesses we have. There, God gave up through Christ all heavenly abilities, all heavenly power, and became human. In Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary. Now, why is this important? Because when we watch what Jesus does, you'll hear him say to people, don't tell anybody about You'll hear him say, Father, thank you for those you have given me. Not for what was mine to start with, and they were, but those you have given me. Father, do through me what needs to happen. These are things that Jesus says, giving acknowledgement that the power is coming from God. So now, as we allow our weaknesses to be known. As we talk to God, God is able to begin to dwell in us, to help heal us, to work through us, to make us more powerful than we ever were before. It is a beautiful gift that as we acknowledge our weakness, God continues to call us. And maybe not even the greatest gift, You see, because God listens, not only listens, but hears, God stops and hears what we're saying. There's a difference. I listen to things all the time. I listen to the radio. I listen to the TV. But if I'm not paying attention, I'm not hearing. Many times, I listen to people. There are people all around me, and I'm listening, but I may not be hearing unless I'm focusing intently. That's what God does for us. God hears what it is that's hurting us, learns what our weaknesses are, comes to us and says, I will help because I've heard what you've had to say. I know what you need. We are called, but God hears us and supports us as we make decisions based on our situation, based on our weaknesses and the power we see of God and Christ within us. The more we have faith, the more we trust in God, the more we place ourselves at a lower level and allow God to work in and through us and don't rely on our own power so much, The more that happens, the stronger our faith gets, the more we realize the great gift of the power of God. Just like Jesus did. Jesus understood where his power was coming from and what was happening. When Jesus performed miracles, it was God working through Jesus. It was God working through that human person. And here's the important part to this. Jesus had trials. Jesus had temptations. Jesus struggled with what we struggle with because Jesus was human. Jesus lived a life like we live. And if God can work through that personage, then God can work through us. What a beautiful gift to have come here and become one of us so that we could understand. And this is what Paul is talking about. Paul can't boast about his abilities. Paul can't boast about what he's done because he realizes it's God working through them and that these temptations are things to point him back to God, to make him rely on God, to make him more powerful because God has called him and he has understood that 
It is God working in and through him that changes the world. Now, Paul has every right to boast. Paul has started some amazing churches, has called people in, has preached, and they've heard, and they've come in, and they've become Christian. Paul has done everything he can, even through all the trials, the calamities, the persecutions, the beatings, the imprisonments, all these things that Paul had gone through, he stayed faithful to God, and Paul could boast about his wonderful speaking abilities because he had a wonderful way of talking, and he could help people to understand, and he could bring them in, and he could help them to see where God was in their life and how much they needed God. And there were many people who converted because of Paul. But Paul is quick to point out that he is weak. He's called even despite his weaknesses. Does he have some great gifts? Yep. Are they the only things God needs? No. Look at what God was able to do in and through Paul. Look what God was able to accomplish through that human being. Because that person, Paul, had faith in Jesus, who was the human incarnation of God, the Messiah. The one come to save the world by teaching them through life, and actions, and words about this great God that we have that empowers us. And we're going to hear more about that. But more than just empowering us, God listens, God hears. When we pray, God hears and answers. We may not like the answers, but they are there. So let us rejoice that this great God that we have has continued to call us, regardless of what has happened in our lives, regardless of what weaknesses we have, God has found greatness in you and calls you, empowers you, works through you. The question is, is can we step back and allow God in, accept the gifts God has given us and use them as best we are able and then allow God to do the rest of the work, to show the world the awesome power that God has in working in through us. So we will hear more about all of this in the second half of this message. Right now, though, let us join in the hymn. Teach me, O Lord, your holy name.
Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 13. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and the brother of James and Joses, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he had laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing with them for their journey except for a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and they proclaimed all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Here ends the reading of God's word. May it have rich blessings on your lives. Here you have the story of Jesus coming in and not being heard, not being understood by the people. Which people? Those who he grew up with. His hometown, his own family, in his own house, he was not believed in, trusted. He was not heard and definitely not Listen to. They would hear him talk, and they knew who Jesus was. They knew what Jesus had done. They've known Jesus since he was a little boy. They know every wrong thing he's done. They know where he's come from. He hasn't come from the high places. How can this be a prophet? How can this be somebody who does works? In fact, you know what? We knew him when he was just Jesus. Just Jesus. We knew him in ways that people don't understand. We knew him before he got his head so full of knowledge and could speak so well. We knew him when he was nothing. When he was no greater than one of us. Now, I want you to stop and think about this for a second, because this becomes really important. During our confession today, we talked about people not hearing. During our call to worship, we talked about the various people who would speak and who will hear their message. Who is it that God is calling today? Who is it that's speaking some truth that we're not hearing because we know who they are. We're not hearing because they couldn't possibly have power. We're not hearing because we won't even bother to stop and look at what the truth is. And there are those people that are there today that aren't listened to that aren't heard, that people don't stop and see the truth of what they are saying because they know them. They know what that person has done, where they come from. They know what that family's all about. 
What if that family knows hardship in a way you don't? Can tell you things about real life that hurt. Have experienced things where they truly have hurt. And have experienced God in a much closer way because they've had to rely on that. Think about those who are not heard in our communities. Young children. Because what does a child know? They don't know anything yet. So do we listen to them? Do we truly hear what they are saying and listen for the truth? Or do we write it off? The elderly. In this day and age, many times, we don't hear them. They have those old ways of doing things. They have not yet learned how to use technology. They're stubborn. But they've experienced things. They've seen life much longer than we have. They've known pain that we may not have known. How many of us have truly been hungry? And yet, I've talked with many who've been through the depression that knew what it was like to be hungry, that knew what it was like to have a rutabaga put in water and boiled, and that was their soup, that knew what it was like to eat lard sandwiches. These were people who knew what it was like to be hungry. These were people who knew a different type of life and may have very well had to rely on their faith much more deeply than we've had to. Those who have gone through tragedy, those who have committed crime and seen the errors of their ways. I can remember when I was younger and doing ministry in Maine and being a part of the jail ministry that was there, and you would hear these stories of men and women who had done heinous things who had now seen the errors of their ways. Now, were they sorry because they got caught or were they truly sorry? I don't know. But there was truth in what they were saying. They knew something about God and knew a need for forgiveness and knew that was the only place they were going to get it. And if God can choose any of us, why can God not choose a child? A convict. Someone who is elderly. In which to speak through. In which to work through. If God can come and work through Jesus to show us the great work that can be done, even in that weakness of being human, then why could God not come and be a part of our lives? How great and wonderful it would be to be heard and listened to. To be able to spread the good news that they have about their lives. Who here doesn't want to be heard, doesn't want to share their story, doesn't want people to know how great God is and what God has done. So as we're listening to this story, Jesus is not wanted around and he begins to go out to other places. And in those other places, that's where he's heard. And not only that, now Jesus takes those who God has given him and sends them out two by two in support of one another. And they go out into the world, and Jesus gives them this power to heal, to cure. Even in their weakness, they are given great power to talk about what God has done in and through them, for them, 
what this great good news is, this gospel of God, that we are all worthy of God because we are created by God. That God still loves us and can heal us. That God can take the lowest of us and make us great. And can take the greatest of us and humble us in a way that we need to be humble. This is how God works. In our weakness, God gives us power. In our weakness, God sends us out. None of the disciples were great people. All of them had made huge mistakes. All of them had sat back. All of them had heard Jesus and not understood. All of them were part of what God had given Jesus to work with. And God gave Jesus the power. Jesus then offers the power to them by how Jesus lived. Go out into the world and heal those. Gave them power over spirits simply by showing them who God was in their life and what God could do through them. This isn't magic, folks. This isn't magic at all. This is the power of God in the world working in and through human beings that are weak, making great things happen through our weaknesses. So we're sent out, but even our weaknesses, we are sent out with power because we have that gospel. And beyond that, we have the ability to do something far greater. We can listen, and we can hear as others tell their stories. Have you ever noticed that Jesus always asks for somebody's story? How did this happen? Who are you? What do you believe? Jesus is always asking questions and lets them tell about their faith. And then one of the most common phrases that you will hear from Jesus is, go, for your faith has made you well. Go and sin no more, because your faith has made you well. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the ability to allow people to speak of their faith, of what God has done in and through their lives, to allow their healing to become a message, to give them a place where it's safe for them to practice speaking. Do you want to know what your greatest power is? To listen. To love enough to allow somebody else to share their story. To let that power of God working through weakness be heard in the world. There is great power. And God gives it to all of us. Allows us to realize we are weak, but we are sent out graciously. Graciously into the world, not taking anything with us, but allowing the world to hear what's there and to take care of us, allowing us to share our stories and to hear the stories of others as they invite us in. And Jesus even says, it's no big deal if they don't. Simply brush the dust of that off your feet and go on. Ladies and gentlemen, we are weak but we have great power as we are sent out into the world. May you love with that power. May the things you do help others to see God and be healed. 
And may your listening to someone else, to truly hearing them, help you be the ears of God that allows their story to build them up and heal them. That is the greatest gift God has given is our ability to love one another that much. That we would listen, we would hear, and we would do. Now, my friends, our God calls us to offer up our praise and thanksgiving. To take time to say thank you for the gifts we've been given, and also to reflect on where we could use those gifts and make our vows. So today, I'd like to talk about that hearing. In his book, The Light in the Attic, Shel Silverstein writes a poem called The Little Boy and the Old Man. Listen to his words. Said the little boy, sometimes I drop my spoon. Said the old man, I do that too. The little boy whispered, I wet my pants. I do that too, laughed the little old man. Said the little boy, I often cry. The old man nodded, so do I. But worst of all, said the boy, it seems grown-ups don't pay attention to me. And he felt the warmth of a wrinkled old hand. I know what you mean, said the little old man. As we offer up our thanks and praise to God this morning, think of how God may be calling you to hear others, how you might devote more time to this practice, not only listening, but hearing as our God listens and hears to us. Think of how this may improve and empower someone else. The way God's listening and hearing empowers you. In these moments of silence, make your vows and offerings to God and ask for the Almighty's help in your own work here. Brothers and sisters, we have asked and made vows to our God on our own. But we are not alone. We have the body of Christ to support us. And now let us join our voices together, saying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the hymn as we gather at your table.
as we come together today for the sacrament of Holy Communion, we ask you all to understand and acknowledge that all Christians, regardless of denomination, tradition, or age, are welcome at the table of our Lord as we practice it here at Roberts Congregational United Church of Christ. Today we will bless the elements which you have with you, some bread and wine or grape juice, and we will partake in this meal together in spirit and in truth. Beloved in Christ, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, on that same day sat at table with two disciples, and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God, men and women, youth and children, come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather about to Christ's table. God be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for calling forth the creation and raising us from dust by the breath of your being. We bless you for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We remember the covenant you've made with your people Israel, and we give you thanks for all our ancestors in faith. We rejoice that you call us to reconciliation with you and all people everywhere, and that you remain faithful to your covenant even when we are faithless. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and victory. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the mystery of your word, to suffer and to die on the cross for us, to be raised from death on the third day, and then live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church you have gathered. With your sons and daughters of faith in all places and time, we praise you with joy. Holy, holy, holy. God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered his disciples for the feast of the Passover. Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ's death, O God, we proclaim. Christ's resurrection we declare, Christ's coming we await. Glory be to you, O God. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Jesus' suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection, and awaiting Christ's return and victory. We spread your table with these gifts of earth in our labor, we present to you our very lives, committed to you and your service in behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on your gifts and on us. Strengthen your universal church that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. Restore the earth with your grace that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all our lives. 
that we may know you as the Holy One, who with Christ and the Holy Spirit lives forever. Amen. Let us join in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. This cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. Take and eat. This cup is the new covenant made in Christ's blood. Take. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Now, as you go from this place, be refreshed and renewed. Know that God cares and loves you. That you have been called and sent out, empowered by God, to hear others, to heal others, and to be Go out into the world showing the love of God, spreading the message of God to all who will listen to you and listen to others for that same truth to come back. Go in peace, my friends. Let us join in our closing hymn, set forth by God's blessing.
My friends, I'm glad you were able to be here with us today, and we truly hope that you found some nugget of hope, something to get you through the week. And now we ask for your help. We ask that you help us first by holding us up in prayer, by sharing with God what you're getting from this. And in a few moments, if you are able and willing, we ask that you hit the Donate Now button and give what you are able. Because it's through your generosity and the gifts of people like you that we are able to keep this mission going. That we give these messages, that we work within the world, that we keep the ministries of this church and the greater church afloat. We give thanks, always, for your generosity and kindness. Now, may you have a blessed week.